Welcome back to ShiftCast. We are on episode 18, quickly closing in on 20, fellas. We had a wild weekend. Speaking of closing in, the season is almost over. I mean, it's only May, and we're almost done with RLCS, at least the original or, or uh, the regionals, excuse me. We do have the major at the end of June, and then, of course, the World Championship two months later in September. Before we get into it, what do you guys think about that, that big break? I saw Fear send a tweet out, like, do you think that – the teams that are in form right now are going to be the same teams that would possibly be in. Like, do you think it'd be the top four? What do y'all think about this huge break? Um, I think it'll be interesting to see uh, the teams that don't play in the EWC, how they'll be affected compared to the teams that do. Yeah. Because those teams will be in, an, while it's not a tournament that is threes, they'll be in a competitive environment. They'll be traveling. Like, it'll feel like they're, you know, for a lot of, like, for example, for a G2, it'll be, we're going to Europe, we're going to do this, then we're going to go Saudi, then we're going to do this, then we're coming back to here, we're going to do this. So it'll be, they'll be really in a groove. Um, I don't know what it's going to be like for teams who, yeah, like you said, have to go home for, for two months after London. Bless you, Hoodie. I have you, Copium and I have Hopium. Okay. The Copium is that the format for the major and for the world championship is basically the same. So you need something to differentiate the two. Otherwise, the World Championship would just be a third yeah. major, right. right? So the copium is that at least this time frame mm -hmm. and the break between the two is going to do something to make Worlds feel a little bit more special than yeah. a major. I mean, a major can feel special. And we, we've seen majors be really special, but Worlds is Worlds, you know? So yeah. we need something there, and I think that time break, that break can do something to to help that. But it's copium, I know. <laughs> the hopium, however, is yes, it's nearing June, and a lot of teams are basically done with their RCS season. Yeah. But we've seen in other RLCS years that left such a gap in the year without RLCS being played that other tournament organizers do step up, can step up. So yeah. even if you haven't heard anything yet, that doesn't mean nothing is happening. Yeah. We'll just have to wait and see. And I, it can, can be annoying to just be waiting and setting the darkness because we don't actually know what's going on in, in the next couple of months. But like the people are always trying to put on a good show. We've seen that with bandits just before uh, yeah. the season started kicking off i mean it's not rcs production in 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 scope but it's people who are really passionate about it and something can grow from that we can see other tournament organizers picking something up and then doing something great with it so that's the hopium yeah definitely i think that is the uh, the ideal outcome someone else helps to fill the gaps and, and brings us some more rocket yeah league. There's a lot of people who have a lot of nostalgia for the dream hack days. Yeah, we absolutely. Had. Need, it, need it back lands. so bad. I and, like the, yeah. I like the, I kind of like the idea of the world, the world championship as like a standalone event. Um, it would be nice to have other tournaments that points factor in with the RLCS maybe being like the primary factor, but like, it would be fun if it was like, we had the RLCS season with two majors and then we had maybe like four to five threes, like, um, third party tournaments and if you win them then like you get in or like the team that places highest that it doesn't if, Ooh, if the other i don't know if we, we should give cool. third party tournaments that kind of weight because if they're not controlled by rcs it's going to be very hard to give them the same kind of power but yeah I, well I like, Jens, I like where your i'm head playing is at. god here so yeah, yeah. Maybe, in the ideal world i like where your head is at Maybe like it feeds into a last chance qualifier or something. Yeah. Oh, give me an LCQ back. Oh, that would I be need an LCQ. I mean, we've seen it one. in Valorant too. Uh, oh, Apex year, LCQs well. are far. Apex, are, yeah. Me. Well, the oh thing is, God, I, it goes I, so hard. I'm just a Rocket League esports guy, so I've never seen it. But what I do know is these tiebreakers, these things that are like the final chance to get to the thing that you want to get to, are so intense. Every yeah, time yeah. I remember my, one of my favorite moments in open era is complexity versus space station in that very first oh, tiebreaker. The whole community time. stopped the whole RLCS where I mean, pros are in the chat. Everybody is watch party. It was crazy. It was so much fun. And then obviously of course the, 
the banter that had led up to it for the last year between Rettles and, and, and everyone else. So South uh, America. Yeah, so much content. fun. Anyways, I just want to see what you guys think about that. That uh, I mean, in a way, Wild Cards. Wild Card was a little Wild bit of a so last chance bit qualifier. Of Wild Card yeah. didn't have the same feeling, though, because it kind of, no. felt, it kind of felt more like I don't know. The other like, it felt more like an extension of like you guys yeah. Can also yeah, yeah, I participate agree. rather than to like to me it just felt like part of the world championship. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. The problem with wildcard was that it was so in conjunction that I felt I would often get much more invested in wildcard teams than the teams that actually won. Because yeah. I you'd I watched G2 play nine matches, right? They're on every day for a week and a half. And I'm supposed to like I come away with it remembering like SSG and G2 who made it out of the wild card and Falcons more than I remember right. the team that won because they played right. four. Like if it's, Vitality it's literally played five. That one single right. event that's all yeah, happening exactly. at the same location at the same time. Yeah, interesting. I wonder what they're gonna do. It does seem like Blast is open to feedback and open to making changes. So I'm excited to see what the future holds. Hopefully, it's all positive and and changes that we would love to see. Anyways, let's jump into it. We got a little tangent there before we got started. North America, we got regional recaps. We're going to start in a, a wild final event. Open Qual 6, the last regional of the season. NA is finished, uh, along with Mina Sam at SSA. Everything is kind of set in stone for the most part. Um, G2 absolutely tore through the event this time. I don't know if y'all saw like the clips and highlights, but they were for real freestyling. Like Beast Mode, There's a I do these top five clips right on Mondays, and I go into the replay. And y'all, I'm not kidding. Like 23 seconds prior to the play where he comes like hovering off the ceiling and then like forces that ball into the top corner around Gyros. He doesn't leave the attacking third and he just goes from side to side, like cherry picking off the top. They were just yeah. unbelievable confidence. You could tell that they were, um, you know, they, they, they did not feel concerned or worried. And by the way, that's at zero zero versus dig. That's not like they had a seven Oh lead or anything. They're just playing with such confidence. They have been so consistent throughout the season. Nothing less than top two. Every event, including the major. I mean, that is a level of consistency that no NA team, at least in open era, has shown since we started. Yeah. Ever. yeah. I mean, yeah. Go ahead. Unfortunately, yeah. I missed a little matches, but I did see Beast Mode just being in the attacking <laughs> third the entire time, basically. Yes. He was just camping the other's net, yeah. the opponent's net. Just cherry picking, like you said. I mean, across uh, what is it? Six series, they dropped six games. Mm. I mean, that, that's pretty clean. I mean, uh, we have we've that's seen like downright and like Falcons, like yeah, yeah. We've seen teams clean it up even more than that. But in a region like NA, you get some teams that can go crazy against you, even right. if you, your name is G two, and they just kept it clean. Yeah, um, I think the team looked like a team that knew that everything was clinched right sure, and sure. i think it was a much healthier way than hey let's like let's just kind of like take it easy like everything's mm -hmm. good we're going to be one seed in, in in all the tournaments or na one seed in all the tournaments it seemed like it was more like hey guys we got this free event right we have this event that that uh doesn't really mean much in the in the greater swing of things let's go out there and let's just like try shit and have fun um, and I think it was a t G2, what they showed is that they have so much confidence domestically yeah. that they know that it's not about the domestic tournaments anymore. They know that in order to immortalize themselves in the esport, they're going to have to do it on land. So this was kind of their farewell because, you know, you never know what happens. This could be the last time we ever see this G2 roster specifically play regionally. It could be. It could be. I'm not saying it will be, but it could be. Things happen. They could bomb out of the land. Right, they get bombed out of both lands. Look at Phase uh, last season, um, and um, they went out there and they and they played like they knew they were the best team in the region, and they played like they thought they were the best team in the world. And so I'm uh, I'm so excited to see them because I, I can't remember the last time I saw a North American team uh, look this comfortable on a pitch. Also, yeah. if you can just win seven k per player on the weekend, who's yeah. saying no to that? Just go. <laughs> Well, they know everyone else. It's like it's it's all nerves for them. Like there's six, seven yeah. teams that are trying to win. They're, They're in there. That's like right. let's we're all we're obviously better than these guys, right? Like let's just go let's go play. And and, and they and they did that. And it was awesome. Well, Michael, Michael, Ng 
lose their second straight top eight match after the open qualifier four win. And uh, what's happening? I mean, what's going on? Let yeah, me tell I even you. asked a question you, right you. after the games, and Michael wasn't very receptive to it for some reason. Let me tell you. Let me mm -mm -mm. tell you. I know about another team that started off with a great open qualifier in their split and then went out top eight twice. Oh, yeah? And what happened to them? They won the Copenhagen Major. Okay. See, M80 did not win the Copenhagen Major. M80 didn't go top two the first time either. I'm talking about the Gentlemates. Every, what did everyone say about the Gentlemates? Oh, they had a good regional, but they're not all that. Oh, are they even going to make top eight, guys? <laughs> Meanwhile, in a worse region, you got those the, the the Panthers down there and Sam blowing games to anybody and everybody, and no one whoa, cares. Whoa. To, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Furia. Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. We didn't ask about Furia. Well, I'm saying. Well. I'm, I watch teams go out top eight every week, okay? And, I, and listen, I'm just going to say, G2 looked a lot more confident knowing they don't have to go up against Tiger Nation, okay? So, this is, I mean, this listen. is absolute textbook deflection. This is listen awful, listen. Michael. Terrible. Listen, Cold are we are we at our best right now? No, <laughs> but but listen, Jack but. App Jack. He's the he, you know he's uh he's the captain. You know the captain's yep. gonna get us right. Yep. FK to drag us somewhere if we have to be. You know he we go we can always turn on FK mode. Sure. And he can just start chasing, and uh, you know. I know he's gotten a lot of flack the last two regionals, mm -hmm. uh, and by me too, yeah, out of anger, not not out of right logic. But you know, you got to give Coach Chrome a chance. He jumped in pretty, pretty like over a very small sort of trade window. He they did well. It seemed like playing kind of like not that much different than they were. They haven't been themselves now that he's had time to settle in, but now they have time. They have a month to get right, to integrate him fully as the coach of the team. And then they have another month after two or month or two after that to integrate him for the world championship. Okay. So, well, obviously I'm not, I would never call for another's job, especially in a, uh, in an industry as uh, volatile as esports. but you know, this is now third time that we're thinking uh, what's going on with the team Chrome's coaching in the last two years, phase SSG and now Genji. I think he's kind of on the clock, right? He's gotten this shot to play to, to, to he's gotten this shot to coach one of the best teams in the world. And uh, while he, uh, he had immediate success, um, the longer he's been there, the more they've looked off. And so now I think it's time to, to prove why you have been considered an all time coach is go in there, fix it and, and, and get a great result. And I believe in him. I believe him. All right. Interesting. Genji struggles to close out the season, but you're right. They do have some time, about a month between now, a little less than a month between now and, and the major. September's so all that matters. We'll see. Uh, we'll see if they can turn things around on the big stage. OG upset Space Station in top eight, fight back from be being down 3 2 in the tiebreaker versus Rebellion as well. And they clinch themselves not only a spot in London, but they also secure that. Uh, world Championship berth. Um, OG, I mean, listen. At the beginning of the season, and I don't mean this in, 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 a, you know, in an insulting way, but they were the leftovers. Those, those were the players that were left off of those two powerhouse teams that formed. And I think a lot of people saw them as, you know, a third piece, a support role, a glue player, whatever you want to call them. And so... I think the general idea was that when you put all three of those players together, sure, they'll be pretty good, but I don't think many people had them pegged as a top three, top four team, especially especially after that first regional where they went out 0-3. And, and I think that was probably the biggest problem because there's that little bit of doubt when you put the three kind of leftover players together, and then you see such a rough performance. And you remember, too, when they start event number two, they go 0-2 down in Swiss, right? But, man, as soon as that... Uh, second event hit, and they were able to, to catch their stride in Swiss. It has been smooth sailing and, and really an upwards trajectory all season since then. They've been stronger and stronger and stronger. It seems like the team's getting more and more confident. Um, you know, Calm and uh, I've heard Calm and Nolly in different interviews just talk about how they lean on their experience, 
you know, they, they, they take it one game at a time. They're not worried about the external factors. In that Shopify game, they're not worried about the fact that this makes the major, makes world championship, or ends the season potentially. They're just looking at it, this is the best of seven against Shopify. We know we can win that game, or we know we can win that series. And so I think that there's something to be said for their maturity, their willingness to work through um, any of the, the speed bumps that they had early in the season. And, you know, I'll be the first to say I definitely underestimated this team, specifically early on. And, and they have just exceeded expectations, in my opinion. And I think they should be proud of, of uh, the performance that they've had thus far throughout the season. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't think anybody had them packed to be the team they are right now. And I don't know if anyone had them packed at all. You'd have to ask their significant, other, significant others. But Nully is the kind of player to make every team he steps into a better team. He's mm-hmm. proven that time and time again. And all three of them are the kind of player to just not care about yeah. what people think uh, their placement should be in, in, right. in NA because they have been proven so many times. Yeah. yeah. So yes, I- they're maybe not the kind of players you'd expect to do it without like a top scorer, like a mm-hmm. striker player that everyone expects to be leading that. But all three of them can just rotate around each other and, and play the game the way they want to. Yeah, I, I want to add on. Um, <laughs> I, I think what you said, Hoodie, about how they weren't looking at it as a land qualification match, that their season may be over if they don't make it to this land. Um, you could tell the minute Shopify went up in game six, their entire demeanor changed. Yeah, And obviously they have one player who has seen everything, but two thirds of that Shopify roster has never been to a land. And yep. you could tell they turtled up the minute they realized, Oh my God, if they don't score for a minute and 30 seconds, we're going to London. Right. And the difference was that one team had been there before. One team has major winners and, 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 and regional winners. And the other one is, is mostly comprised of players who are still, I would consider in the developmental stage of their career. But, there's only one. There's only one reason that that OG is here. Like, let's be honest. Nolly's fantastic. Calm is is really solid. Jacob Natman, take a bow. Eight years in, eight years in, he special. was going to war against his coach, Vitality's coach, Carming Corp's coach. All these guys are coaches now. His coaches are his old peers. And he's competing against the best in the world. He was, and I will say it, a top seven, top eight player in NA the split. He was phenomenal this split. He's the reason that they're here. He found another gear once again. And I think, listen, I understand everyone loves Champions Field, but he's the greatest North American Rocket League player. What he has done, no one else has done. It is completely, he he's the only player who's ever made three league play world championships and three open air world championships. Mind you, there's only a handful of players who have made all three open air world championships. It's like him, Vatira, or, uh, and like the, the KC guys, or so the original Moist guys. And then I think the first killer or something. And so it's like, at what point do we just admit that he is eternal, that he has defeated father time and peed on his grave? <laughs> That he will be here until I'm not here. J Naps competing through Proud his uh, through into his 40s. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Now, in all seriousness, it really is impressive. I think a lot of us can can definitely look at like Garrett G's longevity, and obviously he's not able to continue making lands the way J Naps is. Um, and J- I don't know that J Naps was competing as early as Garrett, but um, you know. It's very soon after, and to be like you're like you're describing, Michael. I mean, almost everybody that was competing when JNAP started is done, retired, coach, whatever, off doing something else, and he is still rocking and rolling. It is so impressive, and it's a testament to um, discipline, mm-hmm. right? Because I think like motivation is one thing, but to 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 maintain this level for as long as he has. You you have to work. You have to work hard. You know it is not it's a job to him. Yeah, and it's you have to be to you have to be disciplined. So mm-hmm. you know I think he he shows a level of professionalism, a level of maturity, and um, and discipline again. As I said to the craft, uh, what what an what an impressive career. Even if he hangs it up at the end of this season, 
incredible stuff from Jane Apps. Um, rebellion, luminosity, and of course, everyone else see their season come to an end after a heartbreaking open qualifier six. Which teams, if any, that missed out on lands and, and missed out on worlds, do you guys think should stick together? None of them. Blow it up. There's one. Which Same. one? Snowman. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Keep in principle, case. yes. Keep it. Don't. Ah. Don't. Okay, but look, what are you? Where are you gonna go? Like, what are you? Gonna, the thing is, is it's not do? about them not being good. It's that. I know. Like, I know. But but answer. What are you gonna do? You're gonna take Frosty and put him where? Space Station Gaming. Okay. Viable. Fair enough. Fair enough. And then, I, listen, outside of because I'm looking around, it's outside of Space Station. Scribbles, like I don't know that joining OG Rebellion. Sports. I don't know that joining Rebellion is going to level up. No, his they need they need a third man. They need a third man. I don't. I can know see that... reveal maybe maybe reveal maybe to, to uh, Rebellion. I would like to see. You know, listen, no disrespect to Calm, he's been good this year. I genuinely still think that Nolly and JNaps are world class players, and I think scribbles with them would be completely unlock it. It would be like diet. Diet vitality, like Diet with the way that it's built. Is crazy. Like you got Nolly and Redos in a role, just going for everything. You got JNAP's Alpha, secondary score, secondary playmaker, and then you got a wizard in the middle. That's like what I'd like to see. I mm. think the snowmen, the reason I don't want to see them stay together is because there is a hundred percent chance that they're gonna say they're gonna stick, and then one of them's gonna get an offer and leave, and then it's gonna be like yeah. a whole thing, and then we're gonna have to hear about how 15 year olds hate each other. And I hate that stuff. I want it to be an amicable. I want these children to learn how to, <laughs> you know how to the separate. Just blow it up beforehand. Yes, exactly. Well, right, yeah, there's, right a, there's a decent chance one or more are going to get poached. I feel like Rebellion wouldn't be such a bad spot, though. For Reveal? Yeah, totally. It'd be amazing. It, it might be time for Parth and Two Piece to split up as a duo. <laughs> and then and who's going to fill in? Someone from Snowman? Why not? I, I don't necessarily disagree from our perspective. But I think there have been multiple opportunities for that duo to split, specifically like chances for two piece to go join other squads. And it seems like he doesn't want to. Now maybe there is maybe there's like a limit to falling short of your goals where you know you fall short, you fall short, you fall short, and maybe that perspective changes. Um, but thus far it seems like he has chosen to stick with Parth as a duo. Well, I, I didn't know, man. choose. I to get I, a nine I just to five look around job. and I I I don't like I don't know. <clears throat> okay, well let's do it. Okay, if you had to take one of these one of these players, a one player or all three separate players, you cannot keep a team together, and none of the none of the players can play can be on teams that from NA that made land. So all the leftover players that are now out of a so job. So Nochi two, Genji, SSG, okay, okay. OG. Yeah. You got to put three of them together to make a team that you believe has the best chance to actually compete based on either their current performance, or their projection performance, based on their age and flashes or whatever. Um, which what's your what's your dream non LAN team? I think this is why I'm because I don't know. Like I don't know what the answer is. I feel like a lot of these players had a good team at the beginning of season. I I thought Rebellion should be good. I thought M A yeah. should be good. Those are my two NA three and four last. last so I don't, year, I don't so. know. I don't know what like, you know, swapping out Parth for AJ. What does it do? You know, swapping out who a Parth for a reveal. What I don't know what these things do. I don't know. Well, then I'll tell you what you how it'll work. Okay, this is easy. First of all, the best player that didn't make a land uh, is two piece. Two piece. Yeah. I don't know what the whole thing was about two piece this year. People were like, actually, two piece isn't that good. Actually, Justin is carrying. He's a baller. Him, actually. That kid is a freak. He's a freak. And anytime his teammates play well, listen, I'm sure that the, the random mid-season explosion that cost them a world spot, mm. like if they had gone top eight twice in those things, they're literally I like tied, I think, with OG for a land spot right now. Um, that, they, I mean, that was a team problem. Maybe they, you know, Partha said they weren't working as hard as they should have. So maybe like he wasn't grinding. When he was on, when he looked like he was two-piece, he would look like he was as good as anybody when they played G2, when they played Gen G. He's on the list. That kid is a star. I don't know how he's going to unlock it, but he's a star. 
Next one, my dog Wavy. Okay. Okay. Wavy is the perfect player to compliment players because he's willing to just go and challenge the way that a lot of young NA players aren't. He plays a lot, and he'll tell you this. He said it multiple times. He plays a lot like a young Apjack. Okay. Now, will he turn out to be Apjack? Probably not. But the play style is there to be like a really good forward creator and someone who isn't selfish. And third, people are going to hate this because he was kind of off the radar, but I still believe genuinely that this guy is world class. It's missed. Mm. Missed. The, the guys that Miss played with, no dis- Listen, Garrett G is my dog. I love Garrett G. W- not a main event quality yeah. player. Barely a main Same event here. quality player this year. And Aqua Toasty Dreams. These are, these are like bottom four t- players. Like they're bottom four main event players there for the majority of their careers. Mist made them a surefire every event main event team. So I got two pieces as my second man, kind of LJ, get the, get, give me some space, let me work. I have Wavy up front causing problems, and I got Mist. I don't have to explain what Mist does in that back third. That's my team. I think that team with the right coaching could be a legitimate land contender mm. next year. Two piece wavy mist, huh? Okay. Yeah. Dial it. I would also slot two piece in there, but give me scribbles. Mm-hmm. I like that. And round it off with Aris. Because mm. that's a fun team. With who? Aris. Aris. Okay. We've seen Aris, Andy, and Five up on, on Moist Esports. I know this is recency bias because it's just happened in the, in the last open qualifier, but they were surprisingly good. I mean, they swept uh, Snowman in the Swiss stage. And yeah, they got a Mickey bracket in the playoffs. Oh, shut up. Shut, beating shut Gen your G. mouth. Shut your mouth. Four, shut two, your mouth. One. It's a shut Mickey it. Bracket. But they also <laughs> took two games off of Shopify Rebellion. Yeah. So that's pretty all right. That's pretty I think Aris on that team has been really, really solid. The mm-hmm. team itself mm-hmm. has had maybe some more struggles than Snowman overall for uh, such a young team. I think they were more consistent, no? Three top, four Are top eights. actually now? Three top eights, a top they four, looked, and then they, they kind of sucked a little shaky last. first. Yeah, I think they went out 9 12 three but times. These, they yeah, had this, two top this split was a little shaky, but the first one was three top they, eights. And then they, they finished it with their best result as a team. I feel like they were which, a bit which more Which team consistent. are we talking about? Moist. Uh, moist, 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 moist pirates, yeah, yeah. Moist, pi- moist pirates. Right. Yeah. 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 No, that's right. That's right. I mean, they, they have been good, and Ares is a big part of that. So I'd, yeah. I'd slot them in there as a, as a team from some outsiders. Mm. Legend. Ares is a legend because he teamed with another guy named Ares, but it was E R I S, and it was like <laughs> it was like one of those things where it's like only one of us can survive. <laughs> like he just outpaced him. Ares, Ares, and Forky. Only Forky would team with two guys with the same name, you know? Because that's a uh, Forky Legendary move. stuff. Mm. All right, Hoodie, do you have one, or are we moving on? Um, no. All right. No AJ, no Justin. I could see a little retire, not retirement. That's disrespectful. But I wouldn't be surprised if we saw all, like, a bunch of the players who were sort of old guard that didn't make it. I'm thinking, like... Some mixture of AJ, Mist, Arsenal, and Justin, like three of those players, teaming up and getting an, a healthy bag from an, a tier one org next season. <laughs> healthy bag. Healthy bag. Healthy like, for the they, players. Gonna, it might be a, like, there's going to be maybe an org that looks at OG this year and goes, yeah, let's just take a bunch of older yeah. players and see if they can do it. Yeah. OG doing work for the, uh, the veterans moving forward. The twenty. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I, you know, I was, I was optimistic at the beginning of the season, um, specifically regarding some of this upcoming talent. But I mean, we get here at the end of the season, and a lot of them that are emerging just couldn't really break through that wall of some of our our veteran players. Um, you know, I mm-hmm. think Space Station and and OG just put up a a barrier, and a lot of these other teams, these upcoming upcoming talents just couldn't break through so i don't know i mean hmm. obviously things are gonna be a lot different when january rolls around for 2025 we'll see who has um you know put in the work and, and been on the grind throughout the off season well but, you, you um, say that but but moist cloud nine and snowman have all made a semi-final appearance yeah oh and, and those are, c9 those are good, is like, not a young team yeah agreed c9 is not a young team and and you're right <laughs> that they have poked the up crl there. players they're forever young in my mind <laughs> 
you're right that they have poked in there. Yeah. Um, but I think I, next I, year's I, I was, our year. I felt like I was I was hoping for some consistency. I would like if TSM is top eight every single event. That's yeah. something a little bit different that I can hold on to. Same thing for Snowman. But we saw, like, we saw some ceiling. We touched the ceiling mm -hmm. a couple times, but a lot of times we yeah. ended up touching the floor again. So yeah, yeah. I mean, that's I the biggest thing with young teams, right? It is. That Absolutely, you're not going to have the consistency like, the because you're not going to have the experience. Queso ruined my perspective. Mm. Yeah, Liquid too. Case, yeah, Liquid as well. They ruined my mm. perspective. I would even say Endpoint Seiko ruined my perspective yeah. because these are just like generational players. And it just gave, and I'm sure I'm not alone. It gave me hope for, like this whatever, whether it's NA or or I mean Sam, like Swift. Obviously, he's mm. a, a an awesome talent, but it's hard to do what those teams did. And I think yeah, they absolutely. they made it look so like easy that we were hoping yeah, it might happen some more. <laughs> it, it's it's much more realistic for like a BDS trolley situation where an already sure. strong duo picks yeah. up a very good. And I mean, even with NIP, like Swift won a regional in his debut season. That's a good season for your debut like regional. I was you know I, I like the two split system more than the three split system. Not going to argue with that, but it was a little sad because it felt like Rebellion this split would have made that jump next split. yeah to the it felt like yeah, they had right. figured it out they were beating teams they were supposed to beat every single time they're losing to the big three and that's pretty much it or yeah i guess the big three if you want to throw space station in there um and then you know the season's just over like this yeah, would have been yeah. the next split then I they carry and they make a couple top fours it's tough make... too because no one knew like next season when we roll into it all these players and teams are going to expect two splits they know we've mm -hmm. got to be on our a game right out of the gate we can't have mm -hmm. any fumbles uh, I mean, even a team that has won three regionals, they have one slip up, and now their world spot is in danger. I mean, it is cutthroat. Mm -hmm. You have got to be perfect. Yeah. Crazy stuff. NA, again, a wild event. If you didn't watch it, go check it out. Um, you know, I want to give another shout. I know Yen's mentioned it. Eris and Moist was seriously phenomenal. He absolutely yeah. went crazy. So go give it a watch. Let's jump over to Mina. A little bit more predictable. Falcons complete the perfect domestic season with the sixth regional title. Is that... I remember this right. Is that 20 for TRK? 20 regional championships? One of the greatest we've ever seen, man. I don't Jeez, care. Man, that is, Farmers League, you still got to win. That's a Mina Goat. Yeah. It's got to be at this point. I mean, I mean, we got some pioneers like Ahmad and, and, and Senzo, kind of and Khaled, Khaled putting, you know, Khaled, putting the One's on the map, Khaled but, is the GOAT. But, dude, TRK just 20. How many has there been? Has he, uh, tw I think there's been 30. No, 33. 33. Is 9 9. Wait, no, sorry, nine nine six twenty five regionals. He's only he lost. Met, five. He has lost five. Yeah, that seems like a like not that many. I feel like that's wrong. I think I got it wrong because that seems like too many. It's been well. Wait, was Mina in? It's nine nine and six. Is it not? Is was Mina in? Or, no, Mina wasn't in RLCSX. No, so yeah, no. so nine, nine, nine regionals, nine regionals. Yeah. When did he lose so five? Regionals? He's lost four of them. Oh yeah. Yeah, I guess to rule one. Because they won one in spring, one in winter, two in... Yeah, that makes sense. Now we're, now we're back. Now we're back. I, well, I guess even back. if we're not totally accurate, the point is, it is a very small percentage of the time when TRK is not winning a regional. Unbelievable stuff from him. Um, well, look, with this Falcons team continuing to show the level of consistency, I mean, what are the expectations moving into this London major? I mean, they got to be they got to be high. It's it's also not just TRK winning twenty sure. regional championships. It's also Rivas and Killers winning ten. <laughs> they they were literally they, so they started yeah, playing yeah. the game three weeks ago. You can't like <laughs> they weren't they weren't even born two years ago, and they have ten regionals. That's so I'm crazy. I'm sorry to say, but they have ten. That's crazy. No, can I can I say something? Can I yeah. unleash uh, absolute flamethrower of a take? Speak your mind. Flamethrower. All right. The Falcons are the team to beat in London. They're the best team in the world. Mm. Whoa. I know. I've been at war with the Mina like people it. for a long time. I like it. And I've I've made my my fair uh, my fair share of jabs at at you know top ten lists um, and stuff like that. Mm. But John, Mr. Johnny Boy got it right. That's the best team in the world. Okay. They're the best team in the world right now. In terms of form, they could still lose. I think they are the team that I would be most 
I would be most confident if I went to the the Rocket League casino with a hundred sure. Rocket League credits. Yep. I would I would put my money on the Falcons to win it because they can beat you in so many different ways. They have refused to let up. You know, like Furia. I know I keep bringing up Furia. The complacency is kind of there with Furia. They know it's everything's there, but Falcons have locked in. They show up for work every single weekend. Like it's, you know, they need to win the regional to make it. Um, they get pushed by teams every once in a while and they always find a way through. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think that they're the best team in the world right now. I think their combination, I think their skill sets, all three skill sets mat- mesh super well. Yeah, yeah, Lears being so offensive, mm-hmm. uh, TRK being sort of your classic hard carry midfielder, and then Rawas being a ones counter attacky guy. I think I uh, I don't know how to say his name. I'm gonna say Doom Doom. Their um their coach is like oh, yeah, D7 yeah, yeah. Ohm. I don't want to say apologies. I, I gotta figure that out. Up. Yeah, but he is the most underrated coach in the world because I have watched the Falcons on land make a switch and completely dominate teams, right? Um, yeah, I think they're the best team in the world right now. I think they're the team to beat in London. I like that. Team. Well, the, the scary thing is that sometimes they get tested, right? Um, but we say it like that because they always come back stronger. Yeah. Very often you see a top team get tested and it just means they are, they've fallen off a little bit or the competition mm-hmm. has gotten a little bit stronger. And you really have to worry if they're going to continue their winning ways. But not with no, Team Falcons. With Falcons. They didn't <laughs> drop a game to yeah. the two arguably best teams in the region other than Team Falcons. Mm-hmm. That's well, just how you do it. Speaking of best teams in the region, Twisted Minds has grabbed the Mina 2C this time around. Instead of X Rule 1, they go by the name of anything at this point. Um, Listen, Rule 1 in Copenhagen, they went 1-3. and three. I think a lot of people felt like that was a little bit of an underwhelming performance. What what do we think are the expectations for Twisted Minds with the addition of Ahmad? Higher, for sure. Also because I was talking to, to some people in Copenhagen who, follow, who have followed the Middle Eastern region a little bit better in the first split than I had, and they were already saying that at the time, rule one might not even be clearly that top two team in the mm. region, right? You had those players on Twisted Minds coming up already. And now with the addition of Ahmed, I mean, they're, they're just a very, very strong squad. So yeah. I would say they go at least round five in Swiss. Yeah. Aiming for top eight, huh? But they're aiming for top eight. Yeah. They really are. I like it. We'll see if they can do it. They've, um, as you said, they've tested the Falcons, and if you're testing the Falcons, you're a solid squad, no matter uh, no matter the end result. Mina, just a quick thing. Sorry, yeah. we got really close to the first time ever a player coming second in every single regional event. Ahmad, due to some weird goal differential stuff, Twisted Minds ended up, I think, the on the same side of the bracket as Falcons, but. There was a chance that if Ahmad had <laughs> come second in this event, he would become the first person in the open era to finish second and lose to the same team in every single regional final. So that would have been kind of cool. I'm done. Across, that across was, multiple rosters, be, that's tough. Be right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's jump over to team. Sam because Sam was what crazy. What the hell happened? I mean, there Sam? was so. The thing is, there were so many different possibilities. Right, obviously, Furia looked very good, and they were probably going to grab that spot. But then you had Crew, you had Ninjas, you had Complexity, you had Team Secret. There were so many teams battling for that second spot. And what it really came down to, and we talked about this has been a uh, a recurring theme throughout. It really comes down to those quarterfinal matchups, mm-hmm. that final event, quarterfinal matchups. Who do you get? And and not only who do you get, but like the peers that you're fighting against, who do they get? Are they running into each other? Are they running into teams that they should be? Right. And I mean, the the way that things unfolded was just unexpected it was what what's the meme cinema right Absolute i mean it was just cinema. crazy man so wild and you know I, I don't always i mean listen i watch a lot of rocket league that is like my whole life so sometimes i don't dedicate 12 hours on a saturday to watch every region that's on um so i don't always catch sam but when i do i think it is and maybe it shouldn't be anymore but it's always a surprise at the level, because I think you just hear these, you just hear these international narratives of like fury complexity, 
And for a lot of people, you're just not, you just think that those should be the two teams. You know, you don't, you don't think about a team like Erased. We haven't even heard them mentioned in like an international sense. You know, uh, if you're not tapped into Sam, you probably don't even know who that is. And so it's just always such a, a pleasant surprise to see how many teams are so competitive in Sam. I think, and, and this is a different conversation, but Sam is too good for only two spots at international yes. events. They're too good oh. for that. There's, there are too many teams that should have a chance at international competition. I mean, I, I don't think it's crazy to say that I think there are three, possibly four squads that have the ability to fight into that top eight, like Complexity was. They were fighting into that top eight. They ended mm. up falling in round five, but I don't think that's something that's exclusive to Complexity. I think Ninjas, Crew, Secret, could, and and I mean, hey, who knows? Maybe W7M. I don't know. You get them on a, the international Euro land. Maybe base is pretty too. good. You know, I think there are there's so much talent in that region. It is so... Um, it's time to grow. It's time to grow. Two spots for that region yeah. is, too, is too few. Yeah, no. I uh, I mean, listen, we don't know what's going to happen with majors and worlds. Um, but as a, as an NA, NA fan myself, uh, absolutely no reason we should have more spots than Sam. Because what does Sam produce? A team that, that probably might be able to win. A team that is probably like a good top eight team, top four team maybe. And then two teams that are going to go one, three, two, three. That's what Sam can give you today. That sounds like, um, sounds like an A. they're only going to get better. Sounds like an A. <laughs> um, so, yeah, exactly. Like, I, I mean, I'm excited because watching this region all season, uh, I, w I, I, I found myself at times more excited to watch it than an A. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's, it's, or actually, not just an A, I just, because we were on the same weekend, but like, Sam had, like, it was such a nice thing where, with Europe, it like everybody just got stomped by a few teams, and then those teams would clash. I would always say the NA Saturdays were better was the, were the best, but the EU Sundays were the best. Like they were, they had different meanings. Sam, the whole event, the level is close enough and it's high enough that there are so many teams that can win on any given day. We saw it this week with a team that had never qualified past the one three round in Swiss, getting to the finals. Yeah. Like that is like about... that's major reasons. That's major region stuff. That's so David Rooks, who has been around for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think Luke's been around for a while too. Three PJ and right? Luke. Yeah. Yeah. Which is so very like... confusing because there's also a team called Luke Esports, and Luke is not on Luke Esports, <laughs> he's on Erased. Feels like a loss for uh marketing. But yeah, I mean that's 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 major region stuff, man. This is oh. a Sam is one hundred percent should be considered a major region before Mina or anywhere else, anyone else. Oh. I totally agree, and hopefully they, uh, you know, hopefully there's some sort of adjustment or growth or something for international lands moving forward. But my yeah, question I is, um, with Furia fumbling a bit here in the second split, do we expect them to be as strong as they were in Copenhagen? I couldn't tell you. I have missed too many of the matches. Yeah. I, uh, I'm just going to say it. I wasn't a Lik Wikipedia watcher. I was a Twitter watcher. Okay. I was watching the drama unfold and it was juicy. <laughs> I saw that as well. Oh my God. The I, but it's so very silly. So yeah. very stupid. We're not even going to talk about it. That's how, how silly and stupid it was. Um, but it, it's just interesting to see more and more teams from that region actually step mm -hmm. up. They yeah. are not always the teams we suspected would be right. challenging Furia and, and Team Secret and Complexity, but they're there. They sure are. I'm excited to see what Team Secret does at LAN, grabbing mm -hmm. themselves their first appearance um, on LAN this season. And Liquipedia just tweeted it out. If they go 0-3 in Swiss at London, Complexity gets the major spot. If they go 1-3 in Swiss, I think it is a tiebreaker between Secret and Complexity. Y'all correct me and stop me if I'm yes, wrong. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. And then if they go two and three, if they get past that one and three round, they have earned themselves the second seed for Sam, and they will be representing that region at the World Championship. So, you know, I that mentioned so it. Close. It's so much fun. I mentioned it about North America. Spots are locked, but you've got like Mina um, with Twisted Minds. They're looking mm -hmm. poised to grab the second seed. You've got Secret over here. They've got a really good chance to grab the second seed for Sam. So we've got a lot of fun stuff happening in London. Any other teams, Hoodie? There, Any there other are. teams we're, that we're, could maybe... There, there that are. Could maybe we're, we're all, 
<laughs> we'll get back to that later. Oh, we'll that later. will we? Will yeah. we now? But listen, um, what I loved about this season, and I know I like criticized the two split thing just because I wanted to see more Shopify rebellion. You can't hate me for it. Um, is that I think we got so used to regionals not mattering. It was sure. how you did it lands yeah. that made like you yeah. just have to do good enough to make a couple majors. You make the world championship. I think the biggest viewership shift we're going to see going forward is we've seen regionals matter less and less to viewers as we've gotten into the open era because fans have gotten used to like, it's hard to care about regionals sometimes if you're not a hardcore fan when the land is such a, a better atmosphere. But now all these events matter. You know, even if we do implement auto qual and, 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 and day three Swiss. Yeah, again, absolutely. Like team secret missed that first region, uh, that first land, but mm-hmm. always placed fine. They kept themselves in it. And now they're in a prime spot to make it yeah. in later in the season. So and, and, I, and, I love it. I love it. And on the flip side of that, when you do miss an event like rebellion, yeah. that has cost them here at the end of the season, KC is in a similar spot. So you're right. Every single event matters. Honestly, every single series matters, right? Because yeah. every time you go further in the event, you get a couple extra points. Yeah, the, I, I really hope. Team. I genuinely, I know we've said it a million times. I really hope they fix the format qualifications. They add mm-hmm. maybe a, you know, a double, e, like a, not double, but like not single Elim playoffs. And they add because the two split system makes the to watching it and the points fantastic. Sure. Right. Like yep. every, like we, every single, regions going down to the wire for world spots which that wasn't that wasn't the case last time well let's get down to our uh final recap ssa and i'm just gonna keep it brief the spanish team amabula sweep split two and ssa they qualify for london their chance for worlds essentially hinges on a top eight and it's not happening okay and i don't mean that to be disrespectful but that team is not making a top eight at an international event I mean, they, they would have, I think, probably struggled to qualify to regionals in Europe. And, you know, they, you know, congrats to them for qualifying to London. I'm sure it'll be a fun experience, but I, I don't see them qualifying for Worlds. So the good news is for, for SSA fans, SSA enjoyers, and, and purists uh, across the globe, Limitless, with their success throughout the first split, and they've done well enough throughout the second split to stay in the lead, they should be fine for Worlds, and they will be representing that region at the World Championship. Pretty much guaranteed. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, best of luck to Mobula. That's what yeah. we got to say about that. Okay, sure. let's go on to the next one. <laughs> one of the <laughs> teams. One of the teams of one all the time. teams of all time. One of the teams of all time. Segment. All right. We've got the double down recap. Now, we are looking back at some of our takes from the beginning of the split. Okay, not last week, not last regional, the beginning of the split. What did we say would happen? Anyone want to go first? Because I'll go you know first. I, I need to own this. I'm always right, so I have to admit when I'm wrong. You know. <laughs> um, no, I picked uh, my hot take was that pioneers were going to be OCs one seed. Mm. Did not happen. They actually benched a player instead. Yeah, and they did. Fall, out. They fall apart, didn't they? Um, you know what? I'm gonna say it. This whole new generation of e, uh, OCE players that we were talking about a couple years ago, I'm out on them. Well, it's over. That, well, hold on, banana head. Plays with fever. So, and torsos. All right. <laughs> I don't trust these guys anymore. They keep making me look dumb. Okay. Best of luck to them figuring out how to beat a 75 year old man on a Dominus with a topper <laughs> on it. But I'm over it. I'm done with it. No more. I will continue to enjoy my OC after dark. Okay. Which I love. My OC oh Saturdays my after gosh. dark. I cherish them. But I've had enough of these guys. I keep hearing OC up next. OP up next. Keyboard and mouse dominus with a topper, and you can't beat him in 2024. Hey, Are you kidding me? Figure no disrespect. That's my car, too. Whoa! Hey, you're losing a Yens. You're losing a Yens and OCE regionals. <laughs> There's some victory all with this. My yeah, word. I've had enough. No. Well, okay. I'm making this a water drinking game. Take a shot every time Shiftcast is wrong. <laughs> I, don't have I mean, you might as you fill these up. <laughs> the shot's not gonna work. And uh, I'll take the next one for myself. Cheers. Are they, so because you said water. These are no. These are, are water. Okay. No, these are water. I actually I was, was gonna have turn. some leftover oh, blue okay. moons. I was gonna bring no, no, that. No, that is pure H two O. Actually, not pure. That would be deadly too. But <clears throat> I said. 
I did say that. I can't believe I said that. I said, gentle mates mm. will not be at the London major. Yeah. Can you imagine? Mm. How That's, silly. Hey, that was spicy. Coming off of a major it win. Was. And you felt and crazy. I knew it was spicy. I knew it was a hot take. I barely believed it myself, but there was something in there. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't see the future well enough. There was something troubling my vision and it was <laughs> something blue. There was a wall in front of my eyes. Wow. Obstruct, obstructing your view. Disrespect the, co disrespect the co-bros ever again and you'll see what happens. <laughs> Go over there. Go I'm over there. I'm saying Me? it was Us? a terrible take. But I wasn't that far off with a French team missing out. No, that true. was looking pretty good all season. Unfortunately, the difference hey. is that the Cobros, we don't care. We clock in, we clock out. <laughs> Meanwhile, um, Passion Merchant FC over there has to scream and <laughs> scream and shout every time they score a goal to win an event. Well, well, what say, can I say? I think Jens was on to something because he knew there was a new team emerging. That was going to be a force to be reckoned with. And he, you know, Jens knew that those same four teams weren't going to be at the next major. Hoodie, were you wrong? Uh, well, I guess we don't know yet, do we? We got yeah. <laughs> we we to qualify this final uh, event, don't Jens, we? keep uh, that shot and just there for like about just like there, three weeks. There and then you month. have to take the dirty water shot. Well, right? I said, <laughs> I said that Oxygen will be taking one of those land spots for London and they're poised to do so. I'm pretty sure if they win one series in Swiss, it's it's essentially locked unless we have something like Team 3 or Jobless win the regional. Um, so Oxygen's in a very, very good position for London, but Fair that's not is. all. I also said that they are going to be in Dallas. And I may be right. There is a chance. KC cannot make this um, London major. And so there is a team that we can pass. Now, the path to do so is a difficult one. Um, we really need to be like top two in this regional and top four at the major to grab that spot from KC. And, and obviously, that's going to be difficult. But hey, you know, I was talking with the guys before we started the show. And look, you can't ask for much more than that. We have a chance. They have fought valiantly. They've, you know, a top four, a top two here in these first two events uh, uh, of this split. And, you know, they have a chance. They have a chance. The season is still fun. We have something on the line, something to fight for. And for the auction fans, something to believe in. So, I, I mean, I, I could not be more proud of the team. And, uh, you know, for now, I'm the only one that uh, could be right. Yeah. And, and it also, it is nice to have it, your own destiny in your own hands. Yeah. Yes. Right. Totally. Because I actually feel bad for Garmin Corp that they cannot control anything that's going on anymore. Right? Yeah. Cause, cause sorry, I would be wrong. They're out. I think they're out. They're out of London. They're yes. Out of they they're out of London. Yes. But not out of worlds yet. If they, yeah. the thing yeah. is, like Ian's is saying though, even if they win this regional, it still doesn't clinch. Yeah. There is, I mean, that, that does make it think, yeah. that makes things very difficult for Oxford. Well, yes. But, He's right that they don't control their destiny. You know, yeah. they can do everything perfect from here on out. It sucks. And it's still it not really enough. sucks. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. You're right. I'm excited. It, we have our destiny in our hands. And like I said, it's a tough path, but it's an exciting one. You know, I, I talked about this with the Oxygen um, like staff before when we had signed Joyo and, and the, we hadn't, the split hadn't started. I said, like, I said, guys, this is a moment. And I'm not trying to be dramatic, but these French teams have dominated. Not just one, they have dominated. They have been destroying everyone else. And when you have something like that, when you have that Dignitas era, everybody eventually is kind of like, where's, where's the challenger? Where's somebody that can kind of knock them down a run? And I thought, hey, maybe this team can do it. You know, they've assembled mm -hmm. essentially the, the, the best talents outside of those top four teams. I know there's a few more, Acronic, Atomic, and, et cetera, but they've got a good squad. They perform well thus far. So I, I went for the home run on the take, and, and so far, hey, they've given us a chance. Like I said, that's all you can not ask bad, for. Not bad. So there's our, there's our double down. We got, um, we got one guy that knows ball. Half. We're going to have to do a double down, revisit, <laughs> revisit after the major. <laughs> just because you want to. Just no, no. We'll for, by the time World rolls around, we'll forget. I'm off the hook. <laughs> All right, lose. there's our double down. Y'all tell us what you think. What are some hot takes that you have? 
Let's get to the regional previews. We've got one final weekend of RLCS regular season stuff. Obviously, we have the major in Worlds later on this year. Let's dive into Europe. Okay. We're not even at main event yet, and it's already chaos. Oh, what yes. in the world is happening in these closed qu open quals? What is going on? Kari Court lose to Sa again. They fall to the lower side, and they're not alone. Vitality falls to the lower side. Gentlemates falls to the lower side. What on earth is happening? Is there? It was it not the perfect send off to our wonderful regional open quals, <laughs> where it is the teams almost completely composed of the players who have consistently shown they are the best teams in the world. Right. Losing best of fives to rant, not randoms, but bubble players who peaked on them on a good day. Well, not in the case of so who just seemed to have figured just something out. They should be. Teams yeah. They should be and would be more um, times than not. Yeah. So just the perfect exclamation point mm -hmm. or just like a cherry on the turd. That is this format, you know, a perfect oh, send off no. <laughs> this god awful format blast. I know you listen. Everyone listens to Shiftcast. Change the damn format. No one likes mm. it. Orgs are leaving. Orgs are paying people less, or they're only here for the money from the other tournament. It's not even you. Please fix this one last time. Well, uh, I didn't actually see the series between Vitality and Wilder. Did Billy play that one? Bill yes. played, bro. Did, Bill right? Uncle played. Bill. I have yeah. an Uncle Bill. Hey. My Uncle Bill played. I, dude, I have an Uncle Bill. Uncle Billy. <laughs> do you actually? Well, Billy, for I those who are Uncle unaware, I actually really do. Yeah, is yeah, Wilder's coach. <laughs> Why do we all have Uncle Bills? <laughs> I don't have an Uncle Bill. Okay, okay, that's actually but crazy. Two of us, dude. Finn and. And also from Shift, Finn and my dads have the same first name. Oh, okay. And we're, we're both Dutch, and we both have ducks as profile pictures, so it's kind of creepy. That is creepy. Um, but Emil Vaught was not able to play. Right. Billy, their coach, who has unretired multiple times for this reason, <laughs> steps in. And is ready to re-retire. Yeah, doesn't he keep he having ready. to play? Yeah, he does. He's he does he's ready for the season to be over. <laughs> And he just have y'all have y'all seen meets Vitality. Have y'all seen the uh, the tweet that Wild put out of their clip where Billy's on the goal line, like driving the ball backwards into the goal, <laughs> and they're all just cackling, dude. They're not calming. <laughs> they're all just cracking up, beating Vitality. It is oh, so yeah. funny. Well, that's the same with Top Cougars when they beat Carmen Corp in the lowers. They were just like, "All right, lads, here we go." And oh, just, oh like, yeah. Why were they? They were there was no energy whatsoever. This was yeah. not that. This was tons of energy, but it was just so <laughs> silly. It was not focused at all. It was hilarious. No. Bill, Bill is sitting there like commentating his own game. Yeah, Europe like, is so <laughs> funny the too. Line, look at him back it in. It's so <laughs> funny, dude. Goss was a sub all of last year. He didn't mm -hmm. even try to play last year. He got he was a sub for oxygen. Yep. He's made two European regionals. Like he was just fooling around, whatever, hanging out in the cord. And then he just kind of was like, oh, I'll oh. try it out again. Made He's made the same amount of... Goffs has made the same amount of regionals as Carmen Corp, as Vitsira, the split. Like, you just can't make Europe up. Goffs, go. Go. Talk about it. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, we've got Oxygen, Vitality, Gentlemates, and BDS with a very strong lead. I mean, it, it really should... Unless we have just an absolutely catastrophic meltdown from one of those teams, that is going to be your four, um, your four representatives for Europe going to land. Um, how do we feel about those four? I mean, I do think that is the strongest four right now. Obviously, Carmen Corp having a, a little bit of a stumble in second split. But do we think, like, how, how does that stack up to the four that we sent uh, the first split? Do we feel like there's a similar level of strength? Do we feel like they have a similar, um, uh, you know, ability to win the event, make it deep into the event? How do we feel about the four that we're sending this time? I think um, I think it's the same as last time. I think last time we overrated KC a bit, but not overrated. We our expectations for Carmine were so yeah. high, well, like and, they and were kind of naturally three yeah, wins, right? right? And I think just right off of Vitality doing what they did, I think we were all like, "Well, mm -hmm. this is just mm -hmm. this again." Um, but I think it's the same thing. I think what we can really outline right now is that there are a certain number of teams that really have a chance to win the land. Yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. four from Europe are mostly always going to be, if it continues to be four, the four teams coming here will all be in there. We saw it last time with Gentlemates winning. 
I think right now there are six teams. I would be very comfortable with saying could win the land. Uh, I know people are talking about eight, nine, whatever. But to me, it's G2 Falcons and the four European teams. Yeah. Uh, I love my boys on Gen G, but they got to show me they're not that they're who they I think they are again, right? Yep. Um, I think those six teams have shown the level. And uh, I think like last time, I think you'll see all four of them on Saturday. I think you'll see two or three of them on Sunday mm-hmm. and uh, probably see one of them lifting the trophy uh, at the end of the tournament. I actually just really want to see a great performance out of Oxygen in this mm-hmm. last regional. Me too, I buddy, want... me too. <laughs> I know you do. No, but I want it for different reasons than you. <laughs> to believe to believe in yeah. them to be major winner contenders mm-hmm. in London. Mm-hmm. For me, they're not quite there yet. Yeah, I understand that. I, I totally understand that. I, they're, I, they're I don't necessarily want to say I agree because... <laughs> You know, I shouldn't say that, but, but I, but I, you, I like from, you want right? to see him, you want to see him win something first. Like, yeah, we're, we're yeah. competitive with those top four teams, but what if that's a, what if that's kind of a weak day for general mates? What if that's a weak day yeah. for Carmi Corp? Let's and, win. And Let's I know win. I'm waffling because gentle mates came in as fourth seed, won the whole thing. Sure. But I think they had already only really lost to Casey and then, and, and, when it really and, mattered and, right in the finals. And there's a reason that that's kind of like an outlier, unexpected case, right? Because it's not the norm. It's not it what you expect. Be, it would be, yeah. so, sorry, sidebar, would be so funny if General Mates repeated, just <laughs> win zero events regionally and win <laughs> both majors. It's yeah, like just, the, the epitome of like, but can they do it on a co- in a cold rainy night in yeah. Stoke? You know, <laughs> it's like, can they do it they on day <laughs> on day four of a European region? They just have their I, priorities straight, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Save it for the land. I'm definitely yeah. excited. Like I said earlier, I could not be more proud of those guys uh, on on Oxygen. Um, you know, I think the reality is, like, they knew that they had to be great immediately. There was no time yeah. to waste. They had kind of dug a hole from the first split with a top 11 and a top 8. And so if they really wanted a chance at Major and Worlds, they had to be phenomenal from the jump. And they were, um, specifically yeah, in the playoff bracket. I wanna... so. I want to say something about, about what I remember Jack said this once in a, uh, an interview or something. He said, you know, with a lot of the time we'll talk about teams will be like, just give him time, you know, right. just give him time to gel. But what he said is if you don't see something early, right? Like I think about Shopify and my, and my sort of like the continued belief that they were a good team, even when they were really struggling, it's because that first event, they were a good team. I was like, right. okay. There it is. I've seen yeah. something early that that means that like, mm-hmm. you know, midway through the season, if they get a good result, it'll be like as ah, a fluke. Yeah. Oxygen did that. The first right. time you watched Oxygen play against real competition in that regional, you're like, okay, I see it. That's a good, that's a very good mm-hmm. team. And I think you only get better for that until you start to fall off, you know, eventually, but it's only going to get better, I think. And I'm, I'm really excited to see, see what they do. I am too. We'll see what happens. Tune into Europe this weekend. It's going to be a fun event. OCE Chiefs enter this final qualifier with an eight point lead for the major race. They sit four points uh, behind Pioneers for the world championship spot. What is more likely? Chiefs choke or Pioneers win just enough to keep Chiefs out of Worlds? What do you think is the outcome? Chiefs at Worlds, Pioneers at Worlds. Um, I think the Chiefs are a one-three team on land, but I don't. I don't think anyone in Europe. I'm sorry, anyone in Oceania is good enough to, like, like I don't think Pioneers. I would rather. I'm more. I'm, I have more faith in Pioneers well, getting a good bracket and just getting real, enough yeah. than Chiefs just sucking because I don't think that there's a, enough teams for them to suck against. Well, like, mind just, you that Pioneers also benched one of their starters and are playing with a coach. That worked for them last year, though. They literally did that last year and won a region. <laughs> like, they're so... They, they think they're so smart, but they're not because I see <laughs> what they're doing. Like, they're trying to make that work again. Who was their uh, coach last year? We're not going to talk about his, their coach last year. I'm not going to say his name. Terrible person. Like, not even joking. But they did win with their coach last year. So, um, like, I don't know was why they're trying son? to do it again. Uh, I think he was the one Which who I guess played. He, I guess this guy yeah. is too coach sub. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Yeah, fair enough. Yens, you agree? Uh, like, like, I don't know. 
Yes. Basically, what it sounds like, let me summarize, Michael. It sounds like Pioneers have built a safe enough lead that you don't think Chiefs can overcome it at land. I don't think there's going to be a team in top eight, like some random OCA team in top eight. I just don't think that there's good enough, good, like, but do decent you, teams. And, and, and you're for, saying that you don't think another team at home this yeah. weekend will knock Pioneers out early enough. Yeah. Like, I just think they're going to get a top four. Sure. And then Chiefs, you know, unless Chiefs get another top two, and that's just so hard with the way the bracket is. Like, they're just going to have, like, an eight, nine-point lead, maybe six-point lead. And then mm -hmm. getting that two, three round is a lot to ask. I'm going to tell you that. A lot to ask for an OC, too. Yeah, that's fair. So. It's, the, it's like, it's the perfect number for Pioneers to be, like, just out of reach. Yeah. Or, like, at least trigger um, tie at least trigger a tiebreak. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it a tiebreaker is, is tie surprisingly... I like that. Yeah, yeah it's fun. Would but it's it. also, like surprisingly kind of relevant here like it's it's so possible yeah and i think that to, to be They're honest so i think close. that would be the ideal outcome because like you just want to see them play each other it's not about who mm -hmm. can yeah <laughs> it's not about who can get a good match at land maybe against an apac team or who like play against each other see who's better yeah, yeah it. It, it also kind of sucks because someone can just I don't know, there's a fart wrong or someone just had a, a bad result in school or their mother screamed at them and they're just <laughs> not, not feeling great and they're a little bit, you know, not right in the mindset to play and to win and then ah, they lose one too many games and mm. it changes the entire outcome for the season. Tiebreakers are a little bit, I don't know, they're fun to watch. They're very fun <laughs> of to course. watch. They're very entertaining. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, a tiebreaker sounds so unlikely, but it really isn't. Yeah, it really isn't. We'll see how, I would we'll just see say how, tiebreaker. Yeah, I mean, we'll see how OCE unfolds. It uh, is definitely a fun race as well in this final event. Um, and and you know, frankly, maybe maybe the most fun regional is apec because it's just one of these two teams yeah you've got glads you've got elevate and they are fighting to earn themselves a spot elevate wins they're at london they're at worlds it's sealed it's done if gladiators win the story goes on um obviously they'll have to you know they'll have to earn enough points at the major to hop elevate to go world championship but it, like as far as a regional and, and weight riding on it APAC, it's one of those two teams. Yeah. And it would be lovely. I mean, it's expected, but it would be lovely if it would be decided in the grand finals. Mm -hmm. that's, All right. That's where it should happen. Enough. Enough. Let's do it. All of us, we're not picking separately. We have gotten this thing wrong so many times. <laughs> we are going to stand on it as a group. We're going okay. to put our heads together and we are going to pick a team that's going to be the team that APAC is known for for the season. So if we get this one right, no one will remember how many times we got it. That's right. Don't forget. Should we say it on three, all three of us? On three. Because I feel it. I think we all know. I think we're we all, all thinking know. the same team. We're late. Look, look into my eyes. I'm look. I'm staring. I'm getting lost. Okay. I feel good. I feel good. All right. Ready? Yep. One. Two, three, elevate. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I'm oh, riding no. with Kevin, man. No gladiators player came on my podcast. <laughs> Come on. Bro, okay, here's the thing. Tho fluked it up in regional one. Yeah. It's over. He's yeah, back. You're right. You're right. But this is the thing is how many times? How many times have we said, oh, it's time for Gladiators to just be more talented and yeah, but better? Yeah, they didn't have both. <clears throat> but they don't have the power of friendship. <laughs> I mean, Cody, yeah. you are right, yeah. but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, respect, I like that. <laughs> I think what? that should I'm be so our official elevate. stance. I'm on board, elevates the Let's winner. Let's go, we're so back. Kevin, <laughs> I love you, Sphinx Prodigy. Uh, ZPS, <laughs> you have a dumb in-game name, but I love you too. Oh. Let's go. Oh come that on! Is one of the be best. That's one of the best in-game names. What do you mean? It's a it's a it's a cheap rip off of the Smash player, Doctor PP. Okay. <laughs> is it actually? 
No, but there's a Smash player oh. named Dr. PP. His in-game name now is actually PPMD. He's like a very That's famous right. Smash Bros. Okay, I've heard of Zombie Vanessa. Poop yeah, Shark yeah. is just a wonderful concoction of words to become a name. Like, that is beautiful. Yeah. Poetry, And really. even CPS chants nicely. Yeah, true. CPS. You I'm know what I can't say, wait to hear? Well, I didn't mean literally, but literally too, yeah. You know what I can't wait to hear at, 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 at London? What? Daniel Beast Mode Atomic. Daniel Beast Mode Atomic. <laughs> Get into the 104 Discord server mm -hmm. or or tweet at them at RL Chance, I believe. Yeah, I think that's which is the 104 uh Twitter account. Those are the guys who are have been organizing the chanting and the chanting documents, because yes, there are documents, the documents. to collect all the chants so for every player, every team. There's mm. a, there's been so many memorable ones. In my opinion, they are very hard to hear. I have to say this, especially for the people at home who are like, well, why isn't the whole arena doing it? It's very hard to hear even one section over what people are actually saying. It's super sure. loud and people can hear their chanting, but what are they actually saying? It's so hard to get. That's why me and some other why people have not? been walking around with whiteboards with the text on it. So we're showing people what the chants are so they can join in it's mm. very hard but join like uh follow them on twitter maybe even join the, the discord if you're going to a land so you know what to do the chant book will be published sometime before london and get in there with all your chants whether it's something silly as <laughs> g2 chants for but with the moist players <laughs> Or and something time for more you guys creative. To learn what real hoops look like. We'll while you're that. joining also, Discord, go ahead and definitely. Uh, while you're yeah. joining Discord, go ahead and jump in the shift court as well. You can get some discussion in yeah. there. I think one of the the you know on a real note, I think one of the cool things about the shift court is that you that, like there are actual pros in there that talk. Sometimes yeah. probably too much. It's definitely too much. And sometimes oh, yeah, they'll absolutely. get it. sometimes you know. Bad regional, bad regional <laughs> for some pros. They just get in there and start getting mad. Yeah, that's crazy to me. But yeah, I mean, hey, if you want to be a, in there and experience the craziness, if you are a, a pro or a coach in the uh, shift discord, you get a red role so people can recognize like th yeah. they're the real one and then not someone just trying mm -hmm. to steal their name. Uh, it's just some kind of verification that works better than Elon Musk can, could ever do. Well, uh, and, what's the problem uh, with just sending eight bucks? And and yes, yeah, sometimes uh, we need to start charging people for <laughs> shift for blue. Yeah, that's so make good. a Discord name. Julio, I mean, you, you do get a verification. What's wrong with that? You do get a pink roll if you boost the server. But when you say that you know, players sometimes talk too much, I have I, I have access to the logs channel, so can I can even read the deleted messages. And someone just flat out admitted to tax fraud. So there you go. <laughs> 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 okay, so join the shift court. Join the join shift court, the court is, I guess, the, uh, the message. <laughs> Criminal confessions in there. Incredible stuff. <laughs> okay, we've got a segment. Next up, Rookie of the Season Awards. And here's what we're going to do. We are going to each give you two of our nominees this week, this episode, and we're going to reveal who our Rookie of the Season Award goes to next episode. You're gonna, so you're going to want to tune in. Um, does anyone want to kick it off, or, or I can with my fire. two nominations? Yeah, go I'll for it. Go ahead, Andy. All, All right. right. Uh, first up, relevant here because, well, frankly, uh, Tekos has helped give Oxygen a chance by eliminating Carmen Corp in uh, event number two, or at least knocking them to the lower. Tekos on Su has been the giant slayer. And, and frankly, when he's in the main event as well, he's doing a, a lot of work for that team across mm. two different iterations of the uh, roster in split one and split two. You got to give a shout to Tekos. I think he is a player that you need to keep your eyes on in the coming seasons. Um, from there, I want to shout someone that Yans was praising earlier, uh, Eris on Moist. And, you know, you talked about how recency bias, this and that. But so I used to do... When I first got into Rocket League, I, I wanted to coach. I wanted to coach a professional team. Um, I don't anymore, but that was my ambition when I got in. And so I was coaching bubble teams, and this is like 2019, 2020-ish. And I'm telling y'all, Eris has been gross. He has been a very talented player for a long time. And I think there was maybe some 
maturation that needed to happen before he got onto that professional roster at the highest level. But he's 19 now, and I think, um, you know, obviously some of that stuff must, I think it's fair to assume it's happened. You know, we've grown older. Um, and man, he is just, he's just unreal. I mean, there's a reason he was getting these um, tryout opportunities in the offseason. I know a lot of people were like, where, where is he coming from? What is this? Why, why is this happening? Um, similar to Frosty, right? But there's a reason, and it's because he has an unreal mechanical ceiling. I think that was on display this, re uh, this last regional with Moise. He had, y'all correct me if I'm wrong, 100% goal participation. That is Ryan unbelievable. Ryan um, just a, a huge piece of the success that Moist had this season and most recently with their, their best result. So I got to give a shout to Aris and I got to give a shout to Tekos. Those are my two nominees for rookie of the season. Yeah, I can I go next. Oh, no, you go next. You go. Next. Men mentioned Aris, but I want to shout out another North American young talent, mm. and it is Scribbles from the Snowman. This guy has just been on fire for his team for such, such a young player. He didn't even know he could play, remember? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He woke up uh, one day and, re and like, yeah. he was just allowed to play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's 14 years old and not even turning 15 till November. And he's just been putting up the numbers. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull up some st stats, actually. Out of those six regionals, only two of them he dropped below a 1.0 uh, rating across mm -hmm. the, the whole event. Wow. With uh, one of his highest ratings coming in the, in the last regional with a 1.1. I mean, that is just showing he's such a shooter for the team. He's such a scorer. He can do it all. Um, but he's been really getting getting the goals for the snowman. And it's it's just been really good to watch such a young talent actually, actually, you know, performing to the level people say he could. Because yeah. there have been people who have been hyped up. And it it's not surprising that someone who's barely 15, not even 15 in this case, uh, sometimes gets hyped up because they've been destroying everyone in ranked and just aren't a good fit for a team or aren't making it happen in ROS. Yes, it, I mean, it almost makes sense that it happens quite a bit. Yeah. But for someone like Scribble so to actually stand yeah. up and get those results, I mean, it's amazing. The other one I'm not going to pull up any stats for, my other nomination is Sphinx. Stats would be unfair because it's a completely different region. It's sure. a completely different story. But he has cemented himself as one of, if not the, I want to say, the best player of the region as a rookie this season. Is he a rookie this season? Did he play last season? I'm going to doubt myself. He might have I think, played. I think, I think of... he's 15, so I don't yeah, think, I think he would have been able to yeah, play. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Those were his first regionals, and yeah, just incredible. Mm -hmm. He instantly, instantly went to LAN as well. So cool. And, and, he, and he made people want to watch APEC, which yeah. is something like there's only yeah. a few players that, that, that can say that they've yeah. like Yan and Sam and mm -hmm. uh, Ahmad and Mina. And it's like, it's like those. That's like the pillars. Those are the pillars of regions that, that you build off of. Yeah, because he does it with a lot of flair. And now I don't want to say that having a lot of flair always means you're such an amazing player. There will be more eyes on you because... That... That's wrong, though. More yeah. flipper sets equal better. Uh, I'm pretty man. sure that's how that works. That, like, uh, learn ball, pal. Uh, the best player in the world is Squishy Muffins, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there we go thank you i needed okay. that nice but michael yeah what what you got for Thanks. us i got three for you uh Hold on, what? first one Hold is drawly uh drawly i just I, I i you know we had seven and i realized okay. that it wasn't even but the first one is drawly do i need to explain why drawly no. is a nominee no. no uh i'm sure he is the favorite to win the award he is a freak of nature spoilers. he is canadian he is spoilers, amazing bro. at the game sorry spoilers bro i said he's a favorite okay chill <laughs> general mates just won the land <laughs> like come on okay if i'm saying the betting favorite okay relax sure. i got i got some real heavy hitters coming okay i got some real okay. heavy hitters. all right drawly anyway canadian all right yeah. i claimed him so he is 
Uh, fantastic player, regional winner in Europe, which is incredibly, incredibly hard to do. The literal reigning major champions can't even do it, apparently. Um, brought Monkey Moon back to the top, some say. Uh, son of maybe a Ill- illegitimate son of JNAPS. Uh, Lord knows he's probably 18 years older than the kid. Um, and, uh, you know, I just love him. I just love him. I can't wait to yep. see him uh, in this sort of postseason part <clears throat> of the RCS. I thought you said, should, shouldn't they explain it? What are you doing? I want to, I want to talk about who's Canadian. <laughs> like, leave you, I don't, I'm talking about his play. I just want to talk about playing it. Day one, Swift. Won a regional <laughs> Sam. I think uh, had a little bit of a, an adjustment period, but I think kind of proved why he is who he is on the second half of the season. Um, excited to see where he goes. And then the last one, I'm going to keep it short. I think he should be on this list, even though I know he had uh, some off-the-field stuff happen. But he is a kid, and I do really, really hope. It seems like, like at least from his response to it, that he's going to try to be a better person going forward. Uh, and that's Nupo. Uh, you know, what he's done off the off the field, does, or off the pitch, e-pitch, does not uh, take away from his first split where a lot of people were calling him, you know, the future of that region. Um, but, yeah, we'll leave it at that. That's it. One of these people will be crowned the valedictorian <laughs> next week. All right? My money's on Eris because he's from NA. But, um, you know... There's a ton of other players as well that deserve a little bit of a shout out. I'm going to read them off now because sure. uh, I wrote them down because uh, I want, you know, the shift next up. It's not about the best player, to be honest with you. It's about creating yeah, a, a, a database um, or a, a place where players who are working really hard and maybe just haven't hit that top tier yet can be, you know, recognized for their talents. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because yeah. it doesn't happen. The Zens and the Sphinxes and the and the Drollies and the Beast Modes, that doesn't happen all the time. Most players that are at the top at RLCS now spent years and years grinding the bubble. And so I want to talk about some of the other ones. Wavy and Creams from TSM were really, really fun. Loved me some power friendship ball this year. Uh, Frosty and Reveal, Scribbles' as teammates. Or sorry, Frosty. No, Frosty wasn't nominated. Frosty and Reveal. And then uh, Eris's teammate, Five Up, or our NA, uh, were, I think, all mainstays in NA discourse in NA or LCS this year. EU, Toxic, Seamus, uh, who actually, I believe, team now, right? They're, they're, yeah, no, no, they don't. I lied. Um, sure. I, I, I'm thinking of, I get it all mixed up. Toxic and Seamus, and then Eugen and Temper, all different, four different nationalities. Four different nationalities. That's Europe, baby. Um, and I want to shout out Triton as well, uh, who I think had a pretty good season and is a shift cast friend of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, Sw- uh, Diaz from Sam. I know he was kind of back and forth with Swift as the the next prodigy, but I think he had quite a good year and he landed himself a, a big, big spot on complexity. The boys from Team ROC, Team Rock, Dr. Known, Noosh, and Ops. Uh, they were the most fun story, I think, in all of Mina this year. Uh, watching yeah. them grow up in front of our eyes. And I, I think that team, a little bit like the Mina Snowmen, like we're going to see them, you know, yeah. maybe grow together next year, maybe get to, uh, on other top teams. OCE prompt from Ground Zero. Ground Zero took a risk uh, dropping their contending roster for a young up and coming roster. Um, and I think prompt has been the one that's really shown the most uh, belief in that system for, for Ground Zero. Uh, N- N- Nye or Nay from. Nye, I think. Uh, APAC, who had a really, really good season in his first in his first or second year. And then we gotta shout out the boy, 13 years old in an SSA event. Uh test test cow, test show. Test show. Um sorry? Test show. I mean it's test French, show. right? Yeah. It's a yeah. union. So yeah. test show. Test show. Um, I mean, listen, last yeah. thing you want to hear if you're a if you're a, a a grifter trying to win SSA events from Europe, is that there's a 13 year old French prodigy over there because he's basically <laughs> just back to square one, right? Um, but yeah, shout out to Next Up, shout out to everyone at Shift that worked on Next Up. I did not really do anything. I just put together a ballot every once in a while. But Elliot's machine, uh, Finnard, doing great work. So as well. much talent in this world, and I can't yeah. wait to see it. <clears throat> Such a such an incredibly cool piece of content, such a cool project. And, and like Yen said, the, the whole point of it is to shine a light on this upcoming talent. Imagine you rewind three, four years ago, and there's a next up list, and it's highlighting Vatira, Rise, Joyo, Seiko, Drolly in a couple years. Like you, well, Drolly would have been there, right? 
we, there's so there's so like you said there's so much talent and these could be you know I'm rattling all these names this could be in two years that's your next monkey moon that's yeah. your next uh you know that's your next uh Batira. that's your next Itachi so keep your eyes on these players if they continue to stay the course and continue to grind I'm sure they will be some superstars in the coming years final segment of the show today speed taking one more plug for the shift cord. Get in there. Drop your takes. We'll rate your takes. Here we go. Yes, this is from Koozie. Great name. I love that. Teams that win a land should auto qual to the World Championship and get to pick their Swiss round one matchup. That's interesting. Um, Yeah, I, I would say at least you could do it with points. You could do it straight away, right? You could just make sure that winning a LAN is so many points yeah. that you're making it two worlds, right? That's one way to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another way would just literally say yeah. that's a qualification spot. Uh, that might take away a little bit of how RLCS wants to run the show. Sure. So I doubt that would actually happen. Um, would it be fun? Yeah, I think it would be fun. I think it is. it also brings more, which I want. I want more hype to the World Championship, mm -hmm. right? I want that to mean more than the other lands of the year, right? It needs to have something, whether it's more teams than a major, please. Whether it's a different format than a major, who knows? But auto qualifying for worlds coming from a major win would be would be great to see and then picking their swiss round one matchup um that's a lot of power i don't think that matters though because what we've seen from seeding and from picking because we've had both in the past it doesn't really make a yeah. huge difference Almost turns out the same, huh? Can I yeah. can I suggest something? You can. The issue that with the draft that they did for the wild card is that mm -hmm. the top eight teams couldn't pick each other. I would be very interested to see if like a gentle mates tried to snipe a team because you can really <laughs> screw a team if if they go down <laughs> to O one because they're yeah. they're playing teams at the top. I don't if think I, anyone would do it, but it would be fun. Like if if Vitaly was like Dude, that me, would be savage. Imagine you're the fourth team in the draft and you just get selected by team one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so and then they lose. If you actually beat them, then you're like sending one of your main opponents. When they win that one, that uh, one one o or o one match, they got to play a team that lost in the one o round. That's, so it's like that's wild. It, that you know, it might like actually world. happen if behind the scenes, one top eight team is losing in scrims all the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they yeah. just look come look they know like, their a, like they're maybe a like a like like army corp kind of situation where yeah. one team just always <laughs> wins. Yeah, yeah, and then, then you're thinking, ah, oh, we figured those guys out. Let's pick them. Yeah, I, I, I like what you said, though, Yins, about auto qual. Auto qual sounds really nice, but then you don't, and I'm, I'm not saying these teams would try to lose, but you don't have to be consistent. Like your, yeah. your, your proposal it there, takes where the away... points are very, like, general mates are in a really good position for Worlds because they won. It's like, mm -hmm. I think they're currently at 70 something, and 40 of those points are from the major. That's yeah. over half of their points for the season. So, like they, it, it's essentially an auto qual. Yeah. As long as you don't just suck. Like so, disband, yeah. I, and I think this yeah. is probably a, a like a more balanced and healthy way to do it than than straight up yeah. auto qual. Completely qualifying them mm -hmm. takes takes away from from the rest of the season for sure. Yeah. Especially because obviously it's gonna be a top team. Yeah. That's gonna not be in there anymore. But if you just give them enough points, I mean that's that's all they're asking for, right? All right. Let me throw one to Michael. This is from Ty. Atomic has been the best player on G2 in Split 2. Okay, here's my thing about this one. I think he's right in terms of individual performance. But my thing is, like, I feel like we said this about Daniel last Split, and the real truth is that Beast Mode is the best player on the team, but also the player that has sacrificed his sort of individual pop-off stuff the most to, like, make sure the rest of the team works and so i'm still hesitant to say it's atomic because i think beast mode is the one that kind of 
I, I'm not going to use the G word, but I, cause I don't think that's what he does, but I think, um, I think he's been the Dude. engine. I think he's been the engine of the team. So you know I'm what's crazy? Like mode. What's up? I don't necessarily think you're wrong, but the guy is still clipping like more than anyone else. <sighs> Yeah, because he's like fooling around. Like <laughs> his his willingness to do it's like Radosin almost. It's like when when you're willing to like just put your car on the line for anything, you end up doing like a bunch of silly stuff that actually yeah. works out into clips. Yeah, you find know? yourself in nice positions. Yeah. Like like in that matchup against Vitality, when he was taking the ball to the ceiling every time, it wasn't to score. It was to find a teammate. Yeah. Right. And I think that's why, you know, other guys are scoring more, other his teammates are scoring more, but I still think it's to be smart. Uh, but Hootie. Oh, oh. sorry, Jens. Jens. <laughs> I beat you to it this time. From Langley, who says, OG versus Shopify Rebellion was the best online series of the season. No. It was the most entertaining, but not the best. I think the best series has to be one of those semifinal grand final matches in europe from split one the level that was being displayed from those teams was just unbelievable um i think you could also which well actually no online i was gonna say the uh, kc falcons match but that's that's atlanta um if that word had not been best if it had been entertaining the answer would be yes because that was by dude my, I, I looked at my watch my heart rate was 120 i, I don't it doesn't matter I'm not on any either one of those teams. You know, I'm not. It doesn't matter. It was no. so, so incredibly intense. Game seven, overtime tiebreaker for the major, for your potential at Worlds. You can't draw it up any better than that. But was it the best? I don't think so. When I hear best, I think highest level. Yeah. BDS, you know, KC, absolute best Rocket League, and I, I don't think that was. Mm -hmm. I was going to say. I think it was, it was a little nervy. You know, I think some of the, like, you look at that, the, the, the big miss there mm -hmm. from Justin. As the game concludes, in my mind, that's not best Rocket League, yeah. right? And I understand I gonna... why it happens. It's a very intense situation, so I'm not trying to like hate or anything. But yeah, that word, if it wasn't, if it was entertaining, not best, then I would have said yes. I don't think there's a single person on the planet, and you know how much I love my boy Jake. Nobody, it doesn't matter if you were a fan or not. Everybody in that game seven was like, "Please, God, shop fire rebellion. Please get Justin to land." <laughs> Justin, please. Like the we were so London. close. We didn't. We weren't gonna. Do you know how good that would be for viewership? It oh my God, real. Carmen Corp didn't make it. It's fine. The biggest yeah, star true. we've ever produced is here back. This yeah. is great. And you know where did I mean? where did the star get produced? That's right. Ooh. In London. Like, in come London. on. We we have bad script writers. We need to replace the bad script writers. Script writers. <laughs> how, did they, how did they write that in? That's a terrible <laughs> twist. Well, so, yeah, I mean, I, and the yeah, the most entertaining series from online gameplay, bar none. I don't even, yeah. I don't think it's close, actually. I can't there's no that, like I referenced earlier in the show, I referenced the complexity space station series from a long time ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. I yeah. can't remember other series from that season because it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, yeah, that yeah. was so entertaining. And this is going to be the same way. I'm going to hold on to that for a long time because that was such an entertaining series. Okay. Well, Michael, I've, so got, I've got a long one for you. From Pendy is actually the owner of Daystar put a take in the shift court saying, oh, okay. double elimination calls would not be a problem for orgs if there were more tournaments for teams to play in RSS. Totally. This is a, a, a sort of a paraphrase take that was replying to another take that was that, <clears throat> well, it's not a double elimination farmer that's the problem because Smash Bros, or fighting games, I should say, always have double elimination and teams, and sorry, orgs are actually getting more involved with, with fighting FGC titles now, right? But it's not about the format altogether i mean the format's bad but it's still a, a format that that yields teams that win which is what orgs right. are looking for right right but you know i think what, what penny said specifically is that there are 36 days on your calendar that that determine your entire investment and if you fail fail on the wrong one of those days your investment's cooked so um I think if there were, say, four other tournaments from from, uh, let's say we move, let's say we bump the the World Championship up to to August, and and, and the esports World Cup goes down to September. If there's three more tournaments, October, November, December, 
that have a substantial prize pool, let's say 150 to 250 thousand dollars, um, and you know, big backing, you know, all the big teams are going qualification for everybody. The esports orgs that are inevitably going to leave after the esports World Cup, Cloud Nine, TSM are likely two of the of the, of the one thing with tier one orgs. Um, they're staying because they're like, hey, we have this investment. We have a chance to get our branding up there. Let's go to this dream hack. Let's go to this WSOE, all the new ones that are coming in. Um, it's about making sure that there's more stuff to do other than the one main circuit, which is what FGC does. Uh, fighting games, there's no, there's a, I think there's one main circuit, but like mostly just kind of the, to conventions and, and grinding and same thing with Counter-Strike and, and other stuff like that. So, yes. So you agree that double current. LM is not the problem? Uh, it's not the capital T problem, but it is a lowercase a problem. Okay. Mm. Uh, Interesting. Ho- Hootie. This one's going to hurt. This one's from GC. I'm ready to fight. I already know what you're going to throw We've at me. We've seen our last of Garrett, Garrett G. Gordon in an RLCS regional. No! Don't <laughs> ever say that to me. No! This guy better not retire. I will always cheer for him. It doesn't matter if it's just to make main events. Garrett G is my idol as a professional. He has always handled himself with the utmost maturity. I think similar to JNAPS, it shows a level of you know discipline to continue uh, to continue to even pursue it. I think it's very easy to like overlook how mentally taxing being a professional can be you know being in a performance-based career um, especially when you're surrounded by such a just a volatile interest industry so um you know i think it shows a lot of discipline and drive to stick around and, and continue to play enough and as focused as players like jane epson and garrett have to maintain a level where they can still compete professionally and I'm, I mean, he's just my favorite pro. He always has been. Um, he's one of the players that I think I just initially saw uh, finding success and and latched onto. I think we've all probably got that player in our mind. I'm, I bet a lot of people can think of Jane Apps or Rizzo or Justin or, or whoever it was for you. Uh, but I don't. I, I I dread the day. Obviously, it will happen eventually. I dread the day that he announces his retirement and his um, you know retreat from professional play. But it better not be yet. I I don't. I, I'm not ready to face it. Yeah, I I, I think I've told this before on on Shiftcast. But for me, going from I will not stop until I lift the trophy. I know, man. Going to mm. season eight in Madrid for the World Championship and doing it together with yeah. Justin and Turo Pulso came in mm-hmm. to help. Yeah, he won too many things for Europe already. That was. And was I was there, front row, wow, hugging my friends when it <laughs> happened. It was just like such an emotional explosion because that was the moment everyone was waiting for. Well, you know how special it was because there were like every other pro, even the team they just beat was like, they're congratulating him. They're so happy mm. for him because they knew, like what you said, he had been grinding for so long, been trying so hard. He knocked and, his own and, glasses off. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh my gosh. Oh, what a what a moment! What that will forever stay player. with me. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Garrett G, you so better not. Don't ever say that again. War. All right, uh, we got one last one for Yens. Yep, I believe oh, so. Oh, that's the worst guy to ask this one, man. <laughs> this one's from Igoris. Twenty twenty five, not twenty twenty four. Next season, if there even is one, if we even survive as a race, you. A human race. It's always a good question. Um, 2025 is the year a non-NA EU team wins a major or a world championship. A RLCS line. Major. I believe the answer is yes. If Ooh. it's not this year, it Ooh. is next year. Ooh. That's, nice. I mean, it is... It's happening soon. It. it I mean... Closing. Yes, EU and NA still have some sort of grasp on the world. We've seen it in Copenhagen. 
but it is a very loose fist at this point. They're barely holding on. There are teams from around the world Mm -hmm. who have been challenging these European super teams, those North American super teams, for a while now. And it's almost too long. It should be soon. If not this, then next year. That we will see a non-NA or EU team to win a major or a world. I really believe I so. It. I love it. Will it be Falcons? Yes. yes. But there are other teams <laughs> who can do it too. I was not really, ready. I was you're really not ready, sure. you're not ready for that. I was that really hoping. The, um, w- w- when... When Michael read it off and said 2025 is the year, I was really hoping Yin says no. It's <laughs> London. Just, just right at it. Oh, I, 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 that would be a hot take, actually. That would be I, a hot I take. mean, Possible, it's though. a hot take that Michael already threw out earlier in the episode, namely that Team Falcons are the team to beat. Oh, yeah. you're not ready. You're not ready for next week. My largest, hottest take is yet to come <laughs> about the major. I am welcoming it. I am looking forward to it. You're saving it for next? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. The I got to know who's at going to land first. Sure, sure. That's, that's fair. right. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's we'll it, hear folks. you next week, then. That's right. You got to tune in. We got all kinds <laughs> of stuff. Michael's hottest, largest take that he's ever delivered online. My biggest, online. girthiest take yet. The, just craziness here. We Thank also you. have the uh, reveal of our... Valedictorian valedictorian next up shift cast not the official shift one i've been told to say this because our the overlords at shift will uh, terminate my contract if i make anything official that's right that's how this works but the shift cast valedictorian the only real valedictorian (laughs) will be announced of our seven nominees so we got some fun um we got some fun stuff that we'll be revealing next week. We also obviously have a lot to talk about because the season will be will uh, regular season will have concluded. We've got the major and the world championship on the horizon. Y'all tune in. This weekend is going to be intense. As we mentioned, APAC, there's a race going on. OCE, race going on. Europe, um, you know, for the most part, I think we know who's going to London, but there's still some exciting stuff here. Can Oxygen Something's get more proven. points um, in this regional? Can Carmen Corp lock up a first place, get themselves closer to that World Championship's berth? A lot going on this weekend to conclude the RLCS season, so be sure to tune in. Y'all drop uh, drop into the, the comments below. Let us know what you think. Hey, thank you for watching ShiftCast, and we'll catch you next time.